Talo falaba, malo soy fua, malang ma. It's a Samoan greeting that shows respect. So the adults usually know it, the young children take some time to learn it. Um, but I've had to learn it from a very young age because my grandfather <laughs> is a high chief and he expects his children to know um, Samoan. Okay, I'm shaking not out of shyness, but out of fear. So I will hold for a little bit um, because I think what I have to say is quite important to our, <laughs> our group. Um, uh, but uh, the greeting that I have just said is quite appropriate for this gathering um, because it's about the Anthropocene, the environment. Um, so Samoans may have already know uh, Salofa, of course, is hello, welcome. Malor Soifu is congratulations for living. And Lange Mama means, and for keeping a clear sky. So congratulations for living and for keeping a clear sky. Um, yesterday, one of the presenters said something very funny to me, and I will tell you why. Uh, I forgot his name, but he's a professor from Germany working in the University of Sydney. And he said that uh, he was really, uh, I mean, he basically ended his presentation by saying that his own professor had said to the physicists and all the uh, academics of his time that it was their responsibility. But then he, he said something about how the students were either mathematically able or passionate. And I thought that was very funny. Um, because, you know, uh, when I went to school, I was told I was very good at maths, and so I pursued that. Um, but now I'm sitting amongst all of you, and you are somehow very blessed because you're both. You're mathematically able, <laughs> and you're very passionate. Uh, you wouldn't be passionate if you weren't sitting in this room, um, putting up with the long professor's <laughs> talks. Yesterday, right towards the end of the day, I was getting a headache. Uh, from having to absorb so much information. At the same time, I needed to keep awake, so I kept going to get coffee because I wanted to learn more and more from the good professors yesterday. And I would now like to thank uh, Ian uh, for allowing me to enjoy this experience, for this wonderful experience. I think um, whatever you had heard me say in New York, uh, I've worked on it, and I, I think I'll, I've got more to say now. <laughs> um, but thank you very much, Ian, for inviting me here. I'm not new to this country. I love this country, by the way. I was uh, first brought into this country by the Australian Embassy when I was fortunate uh, amongst my class to win a scholarship to come and study mathematics in the University of Wollongong. That's when I first encountered Australians, and I think Australians are some of the kindest people <laughs> made by God. So it's nice to be back. <laughs> um, now, uh, I have to be honest, I, I only gave in my abstract to poor Michelle, thanks Michelle, uh, right towards the end she was still hassling me for, to hand in my, my <laughs> abstract and Jenny's used to that. That's why I was laughing too when they said it's imperfect, our relationship is imperfect. It's great because by being imperfect we're being human. Um, so I love that you said that. But anyway, it took a while to get my abstract through, and because I had chosen a very personal uh, subject, the gentle touch of a museum, and it's always hard to talk about what's in your heart. And so yesterday I was thinking, Jan was up here giving all his, my sister is an environmental uh, student, or yeah, and so she, she would have really loved your lecture, Jan, and uh, I was uh, really inspired by it, but I thought, okay, you're, you're doing the easy stuff because you're talking about numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's taken me a while to put my thoughts together on this because uh, a lot of the stuff that I will be covering comes is, uh, straight from, from this heart and uh, um, uh, I was told by one good professor uh, when I was growing up never to show your heart too much and I said why and he said because people hurt you when they, when they realize 
And um, but because of what I've been through, I realized that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, what really matters is is what's true. Okay, too many tears. Okay, I would like to now thank Anna and Bruce and um, Steve <laughs> for uh, a very uh, wonderful presentation. I think I should have consulted you before this presentation because Jenny is right, our stories are very similar. So, um, you know, my heart came out to yours when you were talking up here. I didn't really need to read your uh, slides. It was just uh, hearing the story all over again. <laughs> um, but it's a good story. It's a very positive story. And I'd like to say now here, Anna, that you did a great job. We were both very nervous in the back, and so we'd meet each other. Let's go to the bathroom. We had a small meeting there. And she was saying to me, oh, I'm so nervous. And I, say, I kept saying to her, no fear. And look at me, here I am. <laughs> I kept saying to her, no fear, no fear. And then finally, just before she came up, I asked her, hey, do you believe in prayer? Because I don't know. <laughs> and she said, of course, I pray all the time. So I said, use that. Unfortunately for me, I didn't really use it. Now I'm praying. <laughs> <laughs> but you did well. <laughs> um, but I wanted to say something about uh, their presentation. Um, I, I am currently studying my postgraduate graduate in development studies in our national university. Um, and only, not because I wanted to study, but because it's relevant for the museum that I do it. Uh, anyway, one of our doctors, uh, who's also a writer in the, in the South Pacific, had come to Australia for a conference and um, she, she said, she, said she, she just wanted to share a moment with us where an Aboriginal lady had gotten, had gotten up and had said to the whole audience, okay, there's, they had chalk somewhere and said, I'm going to put my hand here and if you believe in what I'm saying, if you feel that you understand me and you're part of me, you come up here and you put your hand here and then you put it on the wall. And uh, she said, Dr. Sinava, I said, okay. So it was really funny because I went down and Albert Wentz went down. He's also one of our uh, South Pacific writers, a very known one in New Zealand. Uh, he went down and, he, and they both looked at each other and it was just Pacific Islanders and the Aboriginal and said, oh my goodness, how come it's just us down here? Uh, and the rest of the academics were there <laughs> sitting up in the, in the seats. And Albert Wentz said, <laughs> It's only because we understand each other more. And uh, I thought, okay, I wanted to put that here because, you know, now I can say to Dr. Sinova, I not really. <laughs> Maybe they were tired for a long day of sitting there. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I understand uh, the, the, our stories, but I've also come to meet some very... Um, uh, kind people <laughs> um, uh, who may have been sitting up there. And I want to remind that if that, such an event happens, go down, because in, in the Pacific cultures, and I'm sure that Aboriginal, it's really about action. It's not about uh, what you write. Um, and that's how we move people. Uh, so I thought, this is not very important. The slides are not always important to me, and, and, and what I write is not um, as important when I'm talking, because I come from a background of orator, chiefs, and so it would be a disservice to my tribe, uh, my village, if I was to come up here and just read, because I'm expected to be a very articulate speaker in Samoan. <laughs> So I'm good in English. <laughs> um, but now I'd like to uh, also acknowledge Jenny. Jenny Newell has uh, become a very good friend uh, and a, a colleague, if I can say that. Um, she highlighted thinking across cultures. And I've done that with Jenny very well, still doing it, um, because uh, she's learning a lot from me. And when I have time, <laughs> I learn from her. And uh, I think the museum work that Jenny is doing for uh, the American Museum of Natural History is very important um, from a Samoa's perspective, because there was a Margaret Mead, right, was the first 
anthropologist, uh, and Samoa has a very controversial relationship with Margaret Mead. But now I'm happy to tell my country, and I always do when I'm up there speaking about the museum, that we have a better representative, and she's Australian. Uh, <laughs> uh, she really warms my heart because uh, she talks uh, about deep issues that mean a lot to us. And I think that's what's wonderful about museums is that it can actually change the way about how we feel uh, towards each other. Um, it actually breaks down a lot of barriers. <laughs> and um, yeah, kind of takes us away from numbers too. <laughs> I love numbers, sorry. <laughs> um, the other person I'd like to acknowledge is Jackie. She's like my little sister. She's been running around doing coffee and tea for me sometimes. And as a Samoan, we expect the little ones to do that. So <laughs> thank you, Jackie. Um, right. Now, uh, the gentle touch of a museum. See, I was thinking of giving you a whole uh, story about what that means. But if you don't feel it, then forget it, because it doesn't mean anything if you don't feel it. Um, the gentle touch is something that you feel, so whatever you get from this presentation is part of my gift to you. Uh, the brief history of the museum. The museum is only 10 years old. It's not old. It's a new concept in Samoa. Um, but what it represents, represents uh, things that are way older than us. Um, and so I'm very uh, passionate about the museum um, because it's, it's reminding our people of a lot of the things that we have forgotten. Um, and these, some of these things can help us survive in a very challenging time as we live in today. Uh, so I actually write a lot for the museum. Um, and I think part of uh, my writing comes from my personal experiences. And when you live in a very small country, everyone knows your life. It's like living in a, <laughs> in a village. Uh, every, not everyone knows what happens to you. Uh, so uh, I think I've actually helped uh, bring the museum back to life by bringing myself back to life. Uh, I s was going to share, I don't know, maybe through this talk I will share more of my personal story, but uh, uh, the cyclones and the tsunami that hit Samoa affected our families. Uh, the photos that uh, Jenny had shown us about Cyclone Evan, yeah, that uh, flooded a lot of our coastal areas and we've lost a lot of um, homes and people were displaced, of course, as, as what happens. Um, so, and I don't know, Jenny, if you know that I'm half to Baluen, you don't know. Okay, good, because you know what that means? I'm here for a reason. <laughs> anyway, uh, when Jenny showed that photo, I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, I wonder if she knows, but she doesn't know, which also validifies some of my beliefs that I'm really here for a reason. I keep asking that question, am I here for a reason? <laughs> Yesterday, Swan was ha putting his hands out like this and he said, he said something like, uh, but we have no answers. We have no, <laughs> no answers. And I have always grown up thinking the academics have answers. And then when he said that as a professor, I was like, my gosh, if he doesn't have answers, who does? <laughs> but I personally believe that each of us has an answer. And uh, you know, if we're brave enough to, uh, to find it. Um, so I, I think that's my message today is, is that all of you have an answer. You just don't know it yet, but maybe one day you will be told. And I, I think I know the answer, um, but I, I can't share it with everyone because you'll hurt me. <laughs> I think I'm sharing it now. Um, the, uh, what I wanted to tell you about Tuvalu was that my grandfather had a similar story as LH, where he's always lived in Tuvalu. And Tuvalu is one of the most affected places uh, uh, due to climate change. And my, my father had wanted to take him out of the island to come and visit us in Samoa. But he never wanted to come. And his reason was this. He said to my father, because if I leave, the island will sink. And we used to laugh at that. 
but he died uh, and re soon after he died uh, we you know got all this news that Tuvalu is sinking and so I said to my father maybe he knew all along and he didn't want to warn you know tell <laughs> tell us so our elders always know uh, but um, you know there's a Samoans and Pacific Islanders and I'm sure Anna's country uh, driven by something more than just uh, our textbooks. We believe in God and I, I am a believer in God and because of what happened to me, um, I am not shy to say that anymore um, uh, <laughs> because I think that that's part of the answer is having courage to believe. Right, the museum vision is to safeguard some more tangible and intangible heritage, to nurture creativity. Um, so it focuses on our culture and history. And uh, like uh, I know, we have a very rich uh, history <laughs> and also a very rich culture. Um, I asked Jenny to put these photos, uh, I mean Jackie, to put some photos up for me because I didn't have anything. And she's, is this Lalo Manu? Yeah. Right, Jackie was able to stay with our family at Lalo Manu. This is where the tsunami hit. Uh, I don't know if she got a lot of this. Anyway, it's a, what is this? Oh, okay, <laughs> that's not Lalo Manu. Anyway, that's part of the beach where which the tsunami hit and it's one of the most beautiful uh, areas in Samoa. Um, and what happened was that a lot of the families uh, were affected, so their homes, no homes. Uh, but in 2009, the, when the tsunami hit us, we had to rebuild soon after because in our culture, if you don't rebuild soon after, you're, you're, um, you're not being good to your, the people who have passed away. So we had to rebuild soon after, and we lost 13 people in our family, and the most out of all the families on the beach. And I think the part of the reason that happened was because uh, we run a very um, crowded beach Fale resort, and we had the most guests there. And so we concentrated a lot on saving the guests rather than our family. So. <laughs> Um, but uh, what has happened since the tsunami is that we had to rebuild soon after and we, we got all the fales out again and we invited guests to come back and stay. And the guests who came back and stayed were returning guests and they understood the meaning of us having to rebuild so soon. Um, it was really to revive our spirits and to you know, give us uh, courage <laughs> to um, face life again. And so this question of relocation, yeah, this question of relocation is, is, um, is, is not new to, to me and to us now as Samoans because we're having to relocate. But I'll tell you, you know, while other people may have answers in Samoa for it, my own personal answer is that uh, we should live where we, we feel at peace, at home because when we die, <laughs> um, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, this Anthropocene um, <laughs> is teaching me that we're all affected. And so, uh, you know, um, I've actually had to, it took me some time to go back home, to live there. I now live there. And I now, after, what, four years of not living there and coming back home and sit on the beach, and face the, the sea and the sky. I've forgiven the sea. Um, but it, it, it has actually helped me um, live a better life um, because I'm able to say, it's okay, death is supposed to happen. Um, it's okay, uh, <laughs> I will meet her again, my daughter. Um, you know, that kind of uh, revival, <laughs> uh, the words. Uh, escaping me anyway you understand <laughs> um, yeah so I you know some people say that they don't want to live there because of uh, their fear of um, what if it happens again but I would rather live with peace and love than with fear so 
I'm happy to be at home. And also being at home for a Samoan is really being Samoan because uh, you know the we concept that we're discussing yesterday and still thinking about today and for the rest of our lives is very easily figured by a Samoan. When you're born into a family, you're told from the beginning of when you start talking that you're part of a family, you're not just about yourself. And um, I'm very happy that uh, yesterday we were talking about transdisciplinary, you know, trying to find our familyness, our oneness. Uh, I love that because uh, it means that people are now coming into the idea of family when I've always had to suffer through family from a very young age, and I still <laughs> am doing that now as a Samoan person. I have to contribute to family. Uh, there's no privacy. Um, I have to come to Australia for privacy. <laughs> but it, it's, it's part of life I can't live without because uh, it allows me, I'm very lucky because it allows me to contribute uh, elegantly to the betterment or to an advanced civilization, whatever I've been learning from the schools that <laughs> uh, I've been put into. Um, the concept of family is, is very beautiful in my view. And it's, it's what keeps us going as human beings. Uh, so there you go, the definition of a human being and the definition of we has already been stamped by the Samoans and the Pacific Islanders. And uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't trade that definition for anything else. Um, right, so I use this kind of belief. So it's very easy for me to work in the Museum of Samoa as a non-anthropologist. So I'm very sorry it takes <laughs> to say, but uh, very easy for me because I understand my culture very well and I'm, I'm quite, um, I love it. Not, I, I don't like to use the word pride because it has often caused a lot of animosities between villages and islands. So no, I don't want to say that I'm proud of my culture. I just love it. Um, I think it has a lot to contribute to society. And I think that we as a, a people like Anna and Bruce and, and uh, Steve have a very tremendous task ahead of us as, as people of our own uh, um, islands and uh, indigenous communities, because now we're the voice of our ancestors and now we have to share um, what they were trying to share in their own time. And, uh, but in a different language, not our language. Uh, so, and also in a language that can move the young people who are coming to uh, take over if they, if, if they are supposed to take over in this form of life. Um, but I put accelerating there because I wanted, because <laughs> everyone was using accelerating moments yesterday. Uh, anyway, I, you know, the museum is has has a success story of itself. In the past two years, we really dove into a lot of activities. We did exhibitions, we did plays, we engaged with the community through uh, writing and um, online Facebooking. Yeah, we we got techno wise on, on the community. And so we really surprised a lot of people because initially it was a very dead building, a uh, colonial uh, built building, 100 years old. And uh, people kind of just missed the museum. It's just something to say that we're part of the world. But we got really active in the past two years and we used the idea that what we share in common is human suffering. And we use that with the Samoans and also with our partners overseas. That's what we have in common. This environment problem uh, you know, allows us to touch each other and say, I feel you and uh, I understand your pain and I think that I've got something uh, quite beautiful that you can carry with you. And uh, Jenny as well has taught me a lot of things, uh, part of being, be serious when you present, don't joke too much. Um, so <laughs> just by observing you. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's, I think that's all I would like to say about uh, the museum, my journey, and I wish you all the best. And I also would like to thank you again for being a very inspirational uh, crowd. Um, you know, wait, when I was little, my parents in Samoa, they tell us, if you're really good in school, you make your family proud. And so 
I, you know, getting a scholarship to come here, I thought that was enough for my parents, but no, they wanted me to go on and on and on. And um, now I contribute through other ways. Um, and because my father says, so after your postgrad, will you go to PhD? And I said, Dad, I'm 40 years old. Can you please let me contribute in other ways? I love poetry. It doesn't make you any money. <laughs> But now I can say, oh, I'll introduce you to my friends who have PhDs and who are professors. And I think you will still be proud of me. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I think I've come a long way. Uh, and I think that uh, what I have to give you is, uh, you know, my professor friend says to me, don't smile too much because when you smile, it just makes you look like an islander girl. <laughs> and what's wrong with that? It's beautiful. And some people, all they need is a smile. <laughs> And to say that in front of you is quite brave because you're uh, people of academia, you know, who need to be. <laughs> Thank you for shaking your head and disagreeing. I love you. Thank you again. Fafzai.